in this video, we're gonna teach you the top 12 things to see and do when you're visiting Grand Tetons National Park. If there is something we need, it's a leap of faith. A step away from the comfort zone and be a little brave. So take a look around you. How far can you see? How far do you think you can run? Standing on your knees. It's a beautiful world out there. And just don't pass on the dare. If you have the will and the moment to spare, it's a beautiful world out there. Hey, you guys! Thanks for joining us on another journey. Today, we're in the Tetons National Park in Wyoming. And this is April. And I'm Wayne. Oh yeah, so sit back, relax, and, and enjoy, enjoy the, the journey. journey. So we're out here at the Grand Tetons National Park. It's just a little bit south of Yellowstone. If you're planning a Yellowstone trip, I definitely suggest putting in the Grand Tetons into that trip as well. It's definitely a twofer. If you have the National Parks Pass, obviously you can get into both of those parks and it'll save you, well actually both of those parks about cost you almost what a National Parks Pass costs. So it's definitely worth picking one up. If you're over the age of 62, you can always get the uh, Golden Life Pass as well. And that way you can visit the uh, parks for the rest of your life for free. We have come to the Tetons many times over the years. The one thing that you're gonna definitely wanna check out is Mormon Row. Formerly known as the town of Gravant, Mormon Row was settled in the late 1890s by Mormons from the Salt Lake region. Some of the most iconic images of Grand Teton National Park are taken here. And once you see the location, you'll understand why. These historic homesteads have one of the best scenic backdrops found anywhere in the world. Like, could you imagine having that as your backyard? That'd be, <laughs> that'd be awesome. That would be so amazing. Yes, I love the Tetons. We're on the boat at Jenny Lake. We feel like this is one of the highlights of Grand Teton National Park. The boat ride costs $18 for adults 12 years to 61 years. Seniors, round trip, 62 years old and over, are $15. If you just want to do a one-way ride, it is $10. And children are $10 as well from 2 to 11. My suggestion is be the first boat ride over at 7 a.m. in the summer. That way you have more of an opportunity to see the animals. Fun fact, there was a massive glacier that flowed out of Cascade Canyon, which is to the southwest, and when the glacier receded, it deposited the moraines that dam Jenny Lake. Another top thing to do is to check out the Snake River Overlook. It's famous because of Ansel Adams. Did you know that? Your favorite artist? Yes, my favorite photographer. In 1942, he took the iconic picture of the Snake River and its meandering curves with the Tetons in the background. This is definitely a place to check out. Many people come here to see the view and they attempt to recreate the photo for themselves. And what's nice about this is you just drive up. No effort needed. You know, out of all the national parks, you gotta do the Grand Teton sign. Oh! It is such an amazing backdrop for a picture of you and the family. Yeah, it's it's a kind of cheesy touristy thing to do, but it's well worth it. Come with us. We're at Lee Lake Trailhead. Along um, the Split Lake Trail. It's a good easy start hike. It's flat ground. It's got some beautiful views along the way. Unfortunately, when we went there in June and the mosquitoes were a little heavy, April doing the mosquito dance. But uh, part above. just bring and your mosquito spray, you'll be fine. The trail is about four and a half miles out and back. We went a ways into the primitive campsite area and kind of explored, check things out. And I highly suggest doing that because it turns into like a totally different hike once you cross the bridge and you're on the other side side of the other lake where the primitive camping is it becomes a totally different hike and you're just by yourself the nature comes alive Did you hear that hear what it's the tweety tweet of the bird Let's no hear. other sound except the wind through the leaves isn't that magical Yes, it is. If 
you get there in June or July, the wildflowers are absolutely amazing and they're everywhere. To inspiration point, once you've crossed the beautiful Jenny Lake, you get off the boat ride and then you can take the short trail to the Hidden Falls, which is a thundering cascade dropping 200 feet down a series of rocky ledges. It looks like the most amazing waterfall forever. Yeah, it's beautiful. Then you can go from that same trail and climb up to Inspiration Point, which has amazing views of views the lake. Oh, this, of the this... lake and the Gros Ventre Mountains to the east. The water is such a magnificent color. Can't, can't even describe it and pictures don't do it justice. But we try. This is a really popular hike, whether it's the Hidden Falls alone or the Hidden Falls and the Inspiration Point hike. Get there early, especially in the summertime and try to beat the crowds. When you come to Grand Tetons and you do the Taggers Lake Beaver Creek Loop, what's nice about this trail is it's pretty well groomed. It's pretty flat. I mean, there's some boulders every once in a while, but for the most part, it's an easy hike. A little bit of elevation gain, but not too much. I think it's about 500 foot. Can you imagine being a discoverer of some of this, you know, amazing country oh, that's yeah. all around us? Back in the day? Long, long time ago, yeah. It's about a five miles all the way around, but if you go to the right instead of the left at the beginning, you will have a much easier incline. It's about three miles or so to Taggart Lake. And if you come up this way, it's a little bit uphill for just this little area. And then it's all downhill the whole way. What's your final thoughts on Taggart Lake? It's a beautiful hike. Well worth it. We did the full five miles, highly suggest it. Animals are definitely the thing that you are there to see. You're in mother nature. Travel tip for you. When you're getting ready to plan your trip to Tetons or Yellowstone, and you're looking at getting that bear spray, get bear spray. I know you're gonna be tempted by that $3 bear bell, but do not buy the bear bell. I don't know where this came from. All it does is scare the bears away, which means you don't see the bears or any of the other animals. You're not allowed to pack bear spray or bring it onto a plane, so don't buy it at home. Not gonna do you any good. So the Jenny Lake Trail, a 7.9 mile heavily traffic loop, and that takes you around the lake instead of taking boat ride. If you get there early again, you might be lucky enough to see some animals like moose, elk, bear. It is rated as moderate, so it's not for the beginners. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough hike. If only in the fact that it's eight miles. <laughs> Where to eat? Jackson's the place that you want to go out and have parties and hit the million dollar saloon. Get your picture taken by the elk antler arches and kind of be a tourist for at least a couple hours. It's a cool old town. In the winter time, they do an ice skating rink right there in the square. That's the way I need to do it with crash helmet. Hey, I think I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> If you're on a road trip to the Grand Tetons, there are plenty of places to stay. Whether you're in your RV, tent camping, you want a hotel, Airbnb. Even a cabin. And keep in mind, if you just travel just a little outside of Jackson, you're going to find a lot cheaper accommodations. Uh, we've stayed in Driggs, Idaho for very little money. We've also stayed in Tetonia, Idaho. You can stay in Jackson, but there it's not go travel more. on the cheap friendly. <laughs> it, it definitely gets up there. You can spend three, $400 a night in Jackson in tourist season and not get much of a place. We went in the off season at the very beginning of our channel. Oh, we stayed across from the Deer Refuge. Yeah, Elk Refuge Inn is the name of the motel we stayed in. But yes, we love it in the winter time. Winter time is a great time to come out. There's so many things that you can do from renting snowmobiles to snowshoeing. snowshoeing. We tried cross country skiing, which was an absolute cluster. Yeah, <laughs> we weren't good at that. Especially Wayne. I failed miserably. I'm a good snowboarder, but obviously <laughs> I can't snow ski at all. I, I do like the part where the girl was dragging you up the hey. hill on the, on the skis. <laughs> but let's refer to Card Above where Wayne biffed out on his cross-country skis. Oh, shit! Yeah. You okay? yeah, I did good. Did I hurt the camera? Just, uh, take the camera. You guys been doing this a while? Long enough to know when to get out of these. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome! Woo!
Thank you what so an much. <laughs> it was fun. Good. Yeah, it was fun. Great. But uh, hey, at least we tried it, and we ran cross country skis from a local um, place in Jackson. Super affordable. We had our own snowshoes, but you can rent snowshoes for about ten, fifteen dollars. What we got to snowshoe cross Jackson Lake, and that was insanely awesome. That's like one of the best memories. Yeah, we got stuck in a blizzard. We Highly suggest ones. going to Tetons in the winter time as well. We want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank, thank you, you for, for living, living life. life. See you next Thursday. <laughs>